Hello, my name is Lance Leiswowski. I'm the Sabres beat writer for the Buffalo News. Uh, coming to you at the end of a 82-game season for the Sabres, 91 points, a lot of career highs, a lot of milestones, but the playoff drought is at 12 years. There are still questions surrounding this team entering the offseason, and we laid out a few of those this week in a series, five stories. You will see them published online and in print. The first of the five, of course, is revolving around Casey Middlestad. Now, everybody wants to know what was the difference in Middlestad's game this season, and is this, I guess, a precursor to what he can accomplish uh, in the future for this team. We all knew going into this season that this was a prove-it year for Casey Middlestad. Dealt with injuries throughout the 2021-22 season. Really never gained traction. Wasn't the Didn't show signs of being the same player he was in training camp. Remember, he was their best player in Don Granado's first training camp as head coach. He entered the year as the number one center on this team. And it wasn't until he went down with the injury that Tage Thompson took over on the top line and really made that ascent into being the superstar he is today. Now, with Middlestead, as Don Granado said at the end of the season to reporters in the um, in the press conference a few weeks back, is the health was the is the main difference maker. Not a surprise, but the interesting caveat that Granado added is that at the start of this season, before we saw the real breakthrough from Middlestad, that. He was playing to not get injured. It was in the back of his mind. It created some tentativeness, some hesitation. And when you have that in your game, you're not making an impact on the forward check. You're playing on the perimeter too much. You know, there are times Middlestad, a playmaker, on a rush, he'll enter the offensive zone, he'll slow it down, and it takes too long to make that decision to make the pass. Now, it really started at the end of December where the playmaking started to reach another level, right? He was still hanging onto pucks. He was starting to win more battles along the wall on a more consistent basis, but he was still still had to take his game to another level. It really helped, of course, I think the initial phase, because there were a few in his season, was that Victor Olsen started to make an impact, right, at 5-on-5. Five five. He started finishing those chances that Middlestad was creating. I think having Tyson Jost on that line was a stabilizer, you know, but still, there were still ebbs and flu flows. Although Middlestad, the playmaking, he was more assertive, more aggressive, you were still waiting for him to take that next step. Now, after he treaded water a bit, we saw at the last stretch of the season, Middle uh, Tage Thompson goes down with the hip injury, can't take face-offs, missed a few games there to, to really give it time to heal. Middlestad is the one who gets promoted to the top line, and really had the end of the season that everybody internally in that organization thought he could have when Granado first took, took over as interim coach. Remember, even in that COVID-shortened season when Granado took over, Middlestad was among their better players. It might not have always translated to the score sheet, but you know the talent was there. It was something that didn't always show because this is a kid who got rushed to the NHL. He was a second-line role there really wasn't the patience, this instability with the coaching staff, the defensive structure under Phil Housley. There was just so many factors that went into maybe, well, most certainly a longer timeline for Casey Middlestad to inch closer to that potential. Now, there's still a lot of room for growth. He needs to shoot the puck more. But as we stand here at the end of the season, he eclipsed 50 points. He had over 40 assists. You know, he was second on the team in points at the All-Star break. You know, and not only does it create internal competition, but it answers some very significant questions entering the offseason. Now, what does Kevin Adams do to add to that forward group? Is it all going to come internally? Does he have to look on the outside? Now, if you're him, you can possibly slot in Casey Middlestad as a center again, which is, uh, I guess, a luxury and advantage this organization wasn't sure it was going to have even at the beginning of this season when Middlestad was on the wing. So not only do you strengthen down the middle – you could even have him on the wing as a third-line player who can most certainly, what he showed us later later in the season, make his line mates better. And uh, with Olsen likely moving out, we'll see what happens with Tyson Jost. The skill level on this team is, a continue, is going to continue to rise. And if Middlestad stays healthy and he continues at this pace, gets stronger in puck battles, starts shooting the puck more, that aggressiveness is shown for 82 games. That really answers a significant question for this team moving forward. And 
might even be enough for him to be considered a piece of this team in the long term. I'm Lance Lysowski with the Buffalo News. Have a great day.